In this video, we're going to work through a range of different questions on algebraic fractions. Let's start off with a basic example. We might be asked to simplify the fraction 3x squared y divided by 9xy cubed. If we first consider 3 divided by 9, 3 divided by 9 will give me 1 over 3. We don't need to write the 1 in the numerator, we can just put 3 in the denominator x squared divided by x is going to give me x, so we'd have an x in the numerator. y over y cubed is going to give me now y squared in the denominator. So we could say that our fraction is going to be x over 3y squared. If you wanted, although this is a slightly less cultured approach, you could have 3 multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by y over now 3 times by 3 times by x times by y times by y times by y and cancel them off. The 3 with the 3, the x with the x, the y with the y and that would now leave us in the numerator x over 3 y times y which is y squared. The problem with this particular approach is that if we had now higher powers on x and y that would become a bit of a nightmare. So all I've done is use the rules of indices. Essentially, we said that a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So that's one way that you could look at it. But if we simplified this, now we would have x over 3y squared. Let's now look at simplifying another fraction. So let's say we've got x squared minus x minus 6, and then that's going to be divided by x plus 2. In the numerator, I have now a quadratic expression. We could factor this now to x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2. Then in the denominator, I'm going to have x plus 2. We now have linear factors that we can cancel. We can cancel the x plus 2s, and this is going to leave us x minus 3 over 1, or we could just write now x minus 3. So all we've done is factored the quadratic expression and then cancelled off. Let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now x squared, so x squared minus 2x, and then we'll have minus 8, and we'll divide this now by, let's go for 2x plus 4. So we might be asked to simplify this fraction. Again, the numerator will factor. We will have now x minus 4 multiplied by x plus 2. That's going to give me now the x squared minus 2x minus 8. Then in the denominator, I'm going to factor this, and that's going to be 2 lots of x plus 2. So 2x plus 4 can be factored to 2 lots of x plus 2. And again, the x plus 2s cancel. So we have now the quantity x minus 4 divided by 2. So all we've looked to do is go ahead and factor that. Um, let's look at a different one. Let's go for now x squared. So x squared minus 2x minus 15. And then in the denominator, I might have now 2x minus 1 and multiplied by x minus 5. And we might multiply this now by 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And then let's divide that now by x squared plus 5 x and we'll go for minus 18. So let's see what we can do in terms of factoring. Once we factor this we can cancel vertically or diagonally. So if I look now at the numerator of this fraction I could write this as x minus 5 multiplied by x minus 3. I already have these linear factors now of 2x minus 1 and x minus 5. If I now consider factoring the quadratic here, we could factor that. We could write that now as 2x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 3. And then now in the denominator, we could factor this. We could have now that's going to be x plus 6. And then we're going to have now x minus 3. So all I've done is factor the quadratic expressions. Often, if you're given a scenario like this, you will be led. This is kind of helping me factor this one right here. Okay, so let's see what we can cancel off. We can cancel either now vertically or diagonally. The only thing we can't do is cancel now horizontally. So if I look straight off, the x minus 5 and the x minus 5 can go. 
we've got now an x minus 3 and an x minus 3. And we've got now a 2x minus 1. And then we've got here 2x minus 1. So essentially, this fraction has now been reduced to 1. So all we've got here is 1 multiplied by the x plus 3 over the x plus 6. Therefore, we would write our answer now as x plus 3 over x plus 6. Now, if this had been a division sign, what we would have simply done now is inverted this fraction and multiplied. You turn and times. So if you see a division, simply now factor it, then turn it over, and you can go ahead and cancel common factors if you can find them. So all we've done is simply gone ahead now and express this as a single simple fraction. So that's in its simplest form. Okay, um, let's look at something else. Let's go for now 1 over, so let's have x plus 2, and then we're going to have plus now. Let's go for 3 over x minus 3. We might be asked to express this as a single fraction in its simplest form. We have different denominators, and when we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. So if I had now 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5, the common denominator would be the product of these two. So we'd have now 15 in the denominator, then we'd have 5 plus 3. All I've done is simply multiplied it that way and multiplied it that way. So we can see that our common denominator is going to be the product of x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. Then now we're going to have one lot of x minus 3 plus three lots now of x plus 2. This is one way of looking at it. Alternatively, you can simply think about these now as equivalent fractions. And I'm going to do that method in a moment. So what we have now in the denominator, uh, sorry, the numerator, we're going to have one lot of x, and then we'll have one lot of minus 3, plus three lots of x, plus now three lots of 2, which is going to give me plus 6. And then I leave this now in factored form in the denominator. I don't need to expand this. So we've got now here 4x, and then we're going to have plus 3. So we have 4x plus 3, and that is going to be divided by x plus 2, and then we're going to have x minus 3. An alternative way, I've essentially cross-multiplied at this stage, is to write equivalent fractions. We know that our denominator is the product of a 2, so I say to myself, what do I need to multiply that fraction by, and what do I need to multiply that fraction by? I need to multiply this fraction by the x minus 3. So we have x minus 3 multiplied by the 1 over x plus 2 multiplied now by the x minus 3. And then we add to that now the 3. I've got now the x minus 3. And I need to multiply top and bottom by the x plus 2. So I could go ahead and look at it that way. It's entirely up to you. You could treat them as separate fractions and look at equivalent fractions or you could cross multiply. I prefer for more problematic ones to take this approach. Okay, so that's just now combining. And again, we would use exactly the same technique if we were substituting. So let's have a look at one more. Say we were asked to solve the equation one over x plus two, and then we subtracted away from that now two over x plus five, and that now was going to be equal to four. So what I'm going to do on the left-hand side is get a common denominator. We're going to combine the fraction right here. So we're going to have x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5. I need to multiply all of this fraction by the x plus 5. And then I'm going to have minus 2 lots of x plus 2. That is going to be equal to 4. So if I consider now what I'm going to have in the numerator here, I'm going to have now x plus 5 minus 2x, and then I'm going to have minus 4. Do be careful that you're multiplying through, and that's going to be over x plus 2, and then we're going to have x plus 5. That's going to be equal to 4. So in the numerator now, I'm going to have minus x, and then we're going to have plus 1. At this stage, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation 
buy it now this value of x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5. So x plus 2, then we're going to have x plus 5. So I've got now minus x plus 1, and I'm just going to expand the brackets. I'm going to have x squared. I'm going to have plus 2x plus 5x, which is going to give me plus 7x plus 10. So at this stage, I'm going to have a quadratic equation in x, and we're going to go ahead and solve this. So expanding the brackets, 4x squared plus 28x plus 40 will be equal to minus x plus 1. Setting the left-hand side to 0, 4x squared, I'm going to add x to both sides, plus 29x, and subtract 1 from both sides, plus 39 is equal to 0. So we've got a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, and we will go ahead and use the quadratic equation. So let's write down our values of a. a is going to be equal to 4, b is going to be equal to positive 29, and c is going to be equal to positive 39. We know that the solutions using the quadratic equation, x will be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is going straight into a calculator to find the values of x. So if we do that, setting this up, we're going to have now minus b, which is minus 29, plus the square root now of 29 squared, and then we're going to have minus 4 times by 4, which is going to give me 16, times by now 39, let's put in 39, and that will all be over now two lots of a, and that will give me 8. So we end up now with our first solution as negative 1.78. So let's write that in. x is equal to negative 1.78, and that's given to three significant figures. And then the next one, all we would do is go ahead and swap this over now and put in the negative. That's going to give me now negative 5.47. So x is equal to now negative 5.47. Four, seven, and these now are both given to three significant figures. So all we've done is gone ahead now and use algebraic fractions to solve an equation. These are some typical examples of questions that you might be asked with algebraic fractions. There will be more, but this now gives simply um, a collection of a few that might have come up in the past.